Okay, so uh, this little tutorial, I'm going to try and make it quick. This is about saving complex objects. I'm doing air quotes. I should have a camera on myself doing air quotes. Complex um, objects so that you can use them the next time, uh, you know, if you stop your game or whatever. If you want to save the state of where your player is or, you know, any of that kind of stuff. We did, you know, using player press before in some of the other tutorials, we saved off um, like a username or a, like high scores, like a name and a score, that kind of stuff. And, uh, and you can look through that example to see how we did that. It was a little bit, um, I don't want to say Mickey Mouse, but it was a little bit hacked together, just getting the basics of it. Um, this one is going to show you a different way to save objects. Um, and uh, and we're only, the only thing we're going to save in this one is the position of the player. And so you might say, well, I can do that by saving three floats in player press, the X, Y, and Z. Um, have three different uh, variables in player press that represent the X, Y, and Z position. And that's perfectly valid, and, it, and that's fine. And if you look through how we did leaderboards, you could do that for this as well, um, and that'll work. But I want to use this as an example that you can sort of springboard and do something way more complicated with as far as saving off all sorts of different data and how to do that. So um, that's what we're going to do. Um, I'm going to start to just build this scene real quick. Here's our player that we're going to have. Um, I, I'm going to go through this part pretty quickly because we've done it a million times. I'm going to add some controls to this thing so that I can, um, using the arrow keys, I can move it around. And then when I stop and start the game, um, I want it to remember where it was. That's sort of what, that's what we're going to do. And we're going to use serialization. Um, we're going to store stuff as a JSON object, um, write it out, read it back in, parse it, um, and then remember what we were, what we were doing. So that's, that's what this is all going to be about. Um, shouldn't take too long. It's not a ton of code and uh, we'll get right to it. So I'm just going to rename this thing to Apple. And we will create a C sharp script and I will call it player controller. And I will attach it to my Apple. Like this. And then we will edit. Let me zoom in on this a little bit. There we go. Okay, um, so in this sort of thing, we'll have a speed. We'll say public float speed equals 0.1f. And again, this, this stuff isn't really important for this example. It's just, um, just going to be used so that we can move it around. So I will go kind of quick. So we have a speed. We're just going to look for arrow keys and move it around. So if input.get key, key code.write arrow, then we will say vector2 position equals transform. Remember, this is going to be attached to our apple. So when we say transform.position, that is the position of our apple. And then we can say position.x plus equals speed. And then transform.position equals position. That will update us if we're doing the right arrow. I'm going to copy and paste this a bunch of times for left, up, and down. Um, get them going quickly, so we'll change right to left, and when we're going left, we'll do minus, then I will change this one to up, and these are going to be y's, and this will be down, and this will be a y and a minus, I'll save it, and we'll go run, Maybe. There we go, right, left, up, down. Good, so I can move this thing all around using the arrow keys. I hate that blue. I am going to change that. Uh, get my color picker over here, just change it to this. All right, so now when we hit play, um, we move this apple around the screen. But notice every time we start over again, it's gonna go back to its default spot, which is right here. I'll move it down to the corner just to make it a little bit more obvious. And what I want to be able to do is say like, oh, I've hit a save point right here. I want to save my Apple's position. Um, and then if I stop playing and come back, it will remember where we were at the last point. So um, I'm going to make a game save object right here. Just an empty game object. We'll call it game save. And I will create a C-sharp script. And we will call it game save. And on this object, I'll place this thing. And essentially, this will keep track of stuff that we want to save. Um, 
Let me open this up. So inside of this thing, we're going to do a couple things. Um, one of it is, uh, we'll fill this out later, but on start, we're going to restore uh, the state of our object, um, which is important. Um, in update, we will be checking for a certain key press. In this case, we'll use key S um, to save our state. Um, and that's pretty much it. So uh, we'll, we'll put all that together. So inside of update, we'll just start with that. So if, oops, capital if, if input dot get key down key code dot s, we want to save game. And I will put inside of start restore game, something like this. We'll do it later just so it's kind of clear what we're working towards. Um, but first we need to save it. So void, save game, and what are we going to do? Okay, so what we're going to do is we want to just save the position of our player. This is going to be pretty basic. Um, so we need to know who our player is. So we'll have a public game object um, player, right? And then inside of save game, we're going to take the position of this player um, and save it, uh, and we'll write it out. And so um, there, there is kind of a bizarre way that we are going to do this, um, partly because of some limitations in Unity and also partly because of um, the example that I want to show. So there's always 10,000 or 10 million different ways to do th different things. I'm choosing to do it this way just so it illustrates a point. So if you have other ways to do it, that's fine. Put some comments in there or use it completely different way. I don't care. But this is, I'm trying to illustrate a point, so that's why we're going to do it this way. Okay, so I'm going to make a class um, that contains all the information that we want to save. So I'm going to go back over here and uh, what is this? Oh, it's complaining. Capital S. Sorry. Um, and now that I've saved that, actually before we do that, we have our game save. We've dragged our script over to it. And now there's this player object that we're trying to follow. I'm going to drag my apple into this section here. That way they're linked up. And now that we write all this code, uh, we'll be able to refer to this apple wherever it is when we hit the S button. OK, I will create a new C Sharp script. And I'm just going to call it save position. All right, and we're not going to attach that to anything. This is just going to be a script that we edit. Um, and you know, normally when we create the script, we're using all of these different things for Unity. This is just going to be a pure C Sharp class. So we don't need any of this stuff. Um, and we're not going to inherit from model behavior. It's just our class. Um, and we don't need any of these methods because it's not inheriting from model behavior. So it's just this. We're going to have three variables in this one float x, public float, float y, public float z. OK, so this is the data that we're going to save out um, read back in, x, y, and z. And we're going to use this as the x, y, and z position of our player. And remember that this can be anything now. These can be floats, and strings, whatever. You can have a huge, gigantic class worth of data um, that we'll be able to, to write out. Um, and read back in. So I'm only using three floats, but you know this can be as complicated as you want to make it. In order to actually write this thing out and read it back in, it needs to be serializable. So we'll say system, these are square brackets, dot serializable. This is going to allow us to convert, oops, no semicolon. This is going to allow us to convert the contents of this class into a string that we can save and read back in. That's the idea. Um, and we're going to create a JSON string based on this. And if you don't know anything about JSON, um, I encourage you to look it up. It's beyond the scope of this 10-minute video. We're already at nine minutes. Um, but, uh, but definitely check it out. And it's a way to represent objects um, through text. OK, so we have this class here that's serializable. Um, now we're going to come in here to save game. And what we need to do in our save game method is create, we'll say, save position. OK, so we'll do save position equals new, oops, save position equals new save position, like this. All right, and that's going to be, oops, save position s. We need to create a variable. Um, this is going to be our save position, um, and it's based on this class that we have over here. Um, and it has parameters x, y, and z. So now we can say s dot x equals player dot transform dot x. And yes, there are many ways to do this. Oops, dot position. That are better than this. 
Um, we could create a constructor in our save position uh, class that takes a uh, uh, vector three as a default as a constructor, and we don't have to do any of this stuff. But that's right. We're just going to write it all here just because it's faster for this example. Y z y z and that's going to set us up and so now we have we've set the values in this save position class um, equal to what our player transform is um, now we need to convert those to a string and so we'll say string json equals json utility dot to json and we will pass it our object which is s um, and then down here I can say uh, we can just well, we can log it that way I can print it out and, sh and see what it looks like but the important part is we're just gonna write it out to player prefs just like we've done in the past and we'll say player location is a variable name and the text is JSON right. So that's going to write it out. And this will set our player location for this game um, to the string that we generated by converting this object uh, to this thing. And if we run it, let's just see what happens so I can show you. So if I run now, here's my console. Um, oops. I can move my Apple around. When I hit S, now we have this thing here. And hopefully you can see that. It's kind of small. I don't have any idea how to zoom in on it. Actually, I do kind of know. Well, maybe not. Um, anyways, do that. Accessibility. All right, well, I'll set it up later. Usually I have a key, key shortcut for uh, accessibility magnify, but this is a new laptop and it's not currently working, so I need to go set that up. But anyways, if you look down here in your, in your example, anyways, you'll see this string down here, and this is the uh, JSON representation of our object. So, um, and that's what we want. We're going to write this string out to player prefs, which we already did, um, and now the idea is we need to read it back in. So our apple is now here. If I unplay it and I hit play again, um, we're down in this corner, but we saved our coordinates up in this area somewhere. And so we need have our one last piece is that we need to write this restore game uh, method. So we can say string p equals player prefs dot get string player location. And then we'll do a check to make th make sure that there's something there. If p is not equal to null and p dot length, greater than zero. Now we know we have a string. We're going to bring it in, load it into our object. So we will say save position s equals json utility dot from json. Um, and it's going to be a save position. And our string is p. Okay, so it's going to take the string contained in P, um, cast it essentially to a save position object, and then store it in S. So hopefully that all works, but we'll say if S is not equal to null, so something happened, um, then we can say vector oops, 3 position equals new vector 3, and we'll say position.x equals s dot x this and we'll do all three of them y z x y z and then we will say player dot transform dot position equals s oops equals position all right so we loaded in this string it's a json string we convert it we make sure that everything is working out okay, and now we're going to update it. So if any of this stuff fails, like this doesn't exist, or it's corrupted or something like that, our guy is going to end up, our little apple will go back to its default position, and you know the stuff will be okay. Maybe you want to put a little error box up that says, hey, we tried to load something, didn't work, or, or maybe not. But this is how we're going to restore it. We call it in start, and I think that should be it. Let's try it out here and see. So now we're down here. If it restores, it should put it up in this area somewhere, I believe. Let's see. 
Yeah, there it is. And if I move over here and I hit S, so I saved in the upper left, I can move all over the place that I want to go. If I unplay it and I play, it's going to go to the last place where I saved it. So if this is something that you want to continuously save, um, I mean, you can be saving this stuff out as much as you want. It is an expensive call, right? Because it's writing out to disk or to flash or whatever. Um, so it's going to, you don't want to do this every frame um, for sure because everything will just go to a crawl. But, uh, but you can do it as often as you need. Or you prompt the player. You get a treasure box or whatever. Or you go back to a bed or whatever it is in your game. And you say, okay, uh, this is where you're going to save. Do you want to save yes or no? You serialize your object. Um, write it out as a string. Then when you load, you read it back in as a string. And you're good to go. So remember that um, anything in your serializable class, like this one, you put as much stuff in here as you want. Um, there are limitations on some of the things that you can put in here that are not serializable. Like you can't just throw a game object in here. It's not going to work. Um, but uh, a lot of, you can find a way to represent everything you want into a serializable class. And that's the idea with this one.